Hey, yo, do you like wrapping cloth around your naked body? Why don't you go to sadgirlapparel.com? We have new stuff. We're restocked. We also just released the Oh My Ghost full digipack. We got stickers. Go over there and treat yourself to something nice for once, you loser. Cow. Pig. Chicken. Dog. Ferret. Cat. These things that I've listed today are all animals. Now, what do animals normally do? Eat. Poop. Pee. Perhaps? Well, not for Barnyard. In Barnyard, these animals talk, they walk, and boy, do they piss. They even have funny moments that make you laugh out loud. And this thing. What in God's name is this thing? What kind of animal is that? I don't know, but it's short tendon. See, that was a trick question. I know exactly what that thing is. It's Barnyard, baby. This isn't your run-of-the-mill Zootopia or Over the Hedge. This movie's in a league of its own. And if you don't believe me, let me just start out this video by mentioning that even the male cows have udders. The bulls have udders. Now, does the movie make it look like four uncircumcised penises that are really pink? Yeah, but that makes it better. You bring the stuff? It's right here, huh? Because it's Barnyard, baby. This movie grossed $116 million and had a very, very successful two seasons of Back at the Barnyard on Nickelodeon. And on top of everything else, they had the greatest THQ video game I have ever played in my life. And you can actually watch me playing right now because I'm actually streaming Barnyard, Bruh. the official game on stream right now. Come join to see what a masterpiece it truly is. And on top of everything, more than anything else, yes, the movie did amazing in the box office. Yes, the show is incredible. Yes, the game is incredible. But what is more important than anything is this movie has been immortalized in one of the greatest forms of content ever created in humanity. Memes. I mean, look at this. Now that's a funny goddamn meme. Before we get into the perfect movie, let's talk about something that's not so perfect. My reading. Okay, okay, that doesn't mean I can't read. Okay, that means I choose not to, all right? You know, books don't have pictures in them anymore. Well, what's the point? And that's precisely why this video is sponsored by Audible. Now, I'm sure most, if not all of you have heard of Audible before. It's an amazing place with a vast amount of audiobooks and podcasts and even Audible originals. And if you are like me, who have trouble re- who, who, uh, don't prefer reading, you can get Audible now. Listen to a book while you run. Listen to a book while you sleep. Listen to a book while you try to figure out why you can't, I, why, why can't I read? And you can go to audible.com right now if you click that link in the description or use my code and get 30 days for free and one free book of your choice. I mean, personally, if you guys want a recommendation, I've been listening to Project Hail Mary. This book was written by Andy Weir, the man who wrote The Martian. And let me tell you, if you guys like space and the complexities of a spaceship and stuff like that, boy, let me tell you, you're gonna love this. So let's really break down and analyze why and how this movie is the greatest animatronic movie since Five Nights at Freddy's. She is such a bad bitch though. Now this movie was actually called Barnyard, the original party animals, which I feel like is a lot more fitting because let's be real, they are the original. But unfortunately, a lot of people thought the title was a little bit too risque and a little bit too adult for children. You know, you don't want to you don't want children thinking about party animals. But let me just say something really quick. These animals party, dude. These animals Party! I'm not exaggerating when I say 60% of this movie is these animals party rocking constantly. The party rock is in the house tonight, and boy is it the barnyard animals. And I know a lot of people are just gonna be like, ugh, that's shallow. Oh, what, they're just partying animals and that's all they do? Oh, well, let me tell you something. Underneath this party animal facade is one of the greatest plots I've ever seen in any movie ever created. Let's talk about the characters of the movie. The really good part about this movie, because these characters have a lot of detail, a lot of depth, a lot of style. And let's start out with the main character, Otis, voiced by the wonderful Kevin James who is the OG party animal. And I'm being serious about that one. There isn't anything this guy wouldn't do. You could kill his dad and within minutes, he would be back to partying. Seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm serious, that actually happens. And then you also have Pig, who is a fat pig who enjoys eating a lot of food. And we also have Rooster, who is a chicken. God. Damn, how do they come up with this creative stuff? And we got Freddy the Ferret who is just constantly enamored with the idea of eating his rooster friend who is technically his best friend, but he constantly thinks about how he wants to eat the rooster. You just eat your head right off, no? 
Now, does that mean eat him as in like cook him up and eat him like a piece of chicken? Or maybe he just wants to get a little piece of ass. You know, you don't know. That's the depth I'm talking about, baby. And we also have Ben the Cow, the father of Otis, who is voiced by the manly Sam Elliott, who I just want to say, he's kind of a buzzkill, I'm not gonna lie. Like, throughout the entire movie, all he does is do this, do that, and then he dies. Like, what's even the point of having him in the movie? More partying! And we also have the villain, who was the alpha coyote of the movie, voiced by David Kochner, who was named Dag. And of course, we can't forget the sexy eye candy that we got, that is Daisy the Cow. Mm. Damn, boy. She did not deserve to go that hard. God damn. Okay, okay, I'm getting a little bit carried away with Daisy. Let's talk about the plot. The plot is a lot deeper than a lot of people make it out to be. There's happiness, there's sadness, and most importantly, there's a whole lot of partying, dude. Oh! But Otis is basically the equivalent of a teenager who just wants to party, and his dad is just like, no, son, you gotta be responsible. Who are you? So safe to say his dad's a giant fucking loser. Uh-uh, back off, Daisy. There's an L on that boy's forehead. He's such a loser that he dies protecting chickens? What? In the beginning of the movie, Otis literally lands into a giant flock of chickens and kills about 50 of them, and no one bats an eye. But then his dad ends up dying to protect him? What's up with that? So Ben has a little bit of a premonition that there's going to be a big coyote attack. So he stays out late at night to stand guard. And by himself, he tries to handle all these coyotes. And he dies. He gets eaten, basically. Which also begs the question, why aren't these coyotes just taking a giant cow and just feeding themselves for an entire three months instead of just snatching a couple chickens here and there. It makes no sense. So this is where the movie gets very emotional. Prepare yourselves. So Otis, he's holding his father. His father's gradually dying and he passes in his, in his arm, in his hooves. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking, seeing his father die for something that he believes in this is going to be a big turning point for Otis. Nah, dude, he's going straight back to partying. Bring out Crazy Mike. What the fuck is that thing? Seriously, sit like memes aside. What is this? Why isn't anyone talk about this ever? No one ever explains what in God's name is this demon creature. This is genuinely concerning. It actually makes me uncomfortable. Okay, okay, so Otis got his partying out of his body. You know, his dad passed like a day ago in cow days, which in cow days, that's basically a year. You know, it's like, whatever, dad dead. But now it is time for him to mature. He realizes, okay, I got the partying out of my system. My dad died. Let's get my shit together. Just kidding, dude. He's going with the Jersey cows and he's gonna mentally scar an innocent child. <laughs> Wait a second. I know this kid. I've seen this kid somewhere before. Holy shit! But after all of this, it's finally time. Otis goes back in his mind to the time when his father died a day ago, holding his father's dead body in his arms. And it finally clicks. You know, life is fleeting. You can't just go around doing dangerous things all the time. It could be gone like that in a second. You know, really, at the end of the day, his friends are all he has left because now that his father is gone, he has no family. And it's up to him to go back to the barnyard and stand up and be a leader for everyone. He needs to stand up and take down those coyotes for good so they'll never bother the barnyard again. Because that's what a real bull with four uncircumcised penises should do. Nope, not Otis. He gets his shit rocked by the coyotes, makes him look like a bitch, and then tells everyone, see ya, I'm out of here. You guys can deal with the coyotes by yourself. Okay, okay, okay. He does finally come around and is like, okay, fine. I'll fight the coyotes by myself. So it literally took the entire movie. His dad died halfway through the movie. And we've been another halfway through the movie and he finally has some character development where he changes his mind and he says, fine, I'll be the bigger boy. I'll go face the coyotes, which is also another testament to how trash Ben was. Look how many coyotes Otis is taking out by himself. And not only that, but Ben could have easily corralled the entire barnyard to scare him off. 
But no, we had to have someone die in order for Otis to become the main character and get all of the party animals to party those coyotes out of their barnyard. I'm serious, that they literally party them out of the barnyard. Okay, now let's talk about the most important part of this movie, the comedy. I honestly don't think I've laughed harder in a movie about animals that could talk more since I watched Watership Down. We have cows riding mechanical humans, hilarious. We got cows mocking mailmen when they're not even looking, genius. Bulls getting their udders pumped like juicy mommy milkers, fuck. We got animals doing things like golfing, skiing, human tipping, buying human stuff off the gray market. Uh -huh. And of course, the more important thing, getting their udders pumped like juicy mommy milkers. We've got a dying dog who honestly, it's kind of scary to look at. Like that, that dog's dead. That dog's definitely dead. We have stock sound effects of children laughing. We even got dogs talking about giving themselves fellatio just for fun. I was bored, lonely, and a little snackish. Not to mention some of the best stand-up comedy I've ever heard. Not only out of animated films about talking animals, but in general. <laughs> Were you raised in the barn? <laughs> what you looking at, turkey? <laughs> Kevin Hart, more like Kevin Fart. Bill Burr, more like Bill <laughs> Bum. Bo Burnham, more like Bo, n not as good as the animated talking animal that I ran out of ideas. And of course, we can't have a barnyard video without mentioning the wonderful, the magnificent, the legend himself, Biggie Cheese. Honestly, I wish they made an entire spinoff movie just based around Biggie Cheese. What is he like? Why the hell is he so goddamn bombastic? I don't know, but I want to. Mr. So ladies and gentlemen out there who were like, oh, Barnyard's not that good of a movie. And then you watch this movie and then you come up to this point, comment down below and tell me why you think this is actually the greatest movie of all time and how I changed your mind. Because genuinely after seeing all of this stuff about this movie, how would you not think it's the greatest movie in existence? And like most normal people say, boy, do I want to taste that bowl milk. <laughs>